You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, at the TV. At the TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Project Runway After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. Two five six seventeen twenty nine, and now another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Project Runway After Show. Good evening, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another After Buzz TV After Show. I'm Candon Bliss. I'm joined by Miss Stephanie Wanger, and tonight we have kind of a different twist to Project Runway All Stars. The addition of the After the Runway segments, it's going to be kind of an interesting concept to talk about. So you guys tweet us, call us at 424-256-1729. Let us know your thoughts. We're going to talk about that later. But tonight, we have to get into kind of a recap of last week of Episode 8. We're at Episode 9. We're getting down to the wire of Season 10 of Project Runway All-Stars. Only two episodes left. Only two episodes left. The finale is going to be huge. I think tonight there was five contestants left. And it was a little weird yeah. to only have five standing there. But first, I want to do a little recap of last week because with the addition of these After the Runway segments, we're we're going to talk about last week's segment. So last week they had the UN Challenge, the Oh Say Can You Sew, where they had to make clothing inspired by a flag. Yes, and they all had very unique countries. Yeah, it not your typical countries. Exactly. And so they... Uh, it was kind of interesting to see the direction that each designer took with the challenge and then to, um, I guess, see in the end who got eliminated as well. Yeah, and I think we saw some of the designers struggling last week with, with vision and use of color and um, construction even. And it was kind of one of those weeks where it was like, are they going to snap? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and and who ended up going home? Um, Mila. Mila, yeah. Which I think I kind of disagreed with, and that's one of the things they touched on in this After the Runway segment was, you know, what was it really the right decision? And I think even Isaac um, had a little bit of a problem with who ended up going home. I think everybody was a little bit on the fence. Yeah. And they even asked the other contestants, would you have sent Jarrell or Mila home? And a lot of them said Jarrell. Yeah, it, it's so true. And they unfortunately couldn't have Mila in studio because right. she's now doing, I believe, costume design on a film set. So. Which is cool. Good for her. Very good. You know, and that, that, that just alludes to the success of these contestants after Project Runway. This really is a launching point for them. And while we may be disappointed with what they do on the show, they're going to be stars in their own right. So Yeah, exactly. They're all finding, they're going to find their own path Absolutely. after the show. But they did find Mila on set at, I guess, whatever film that she's doing, and she got to kind of give a little shout out, which was interesting. Yeah, she was uh, <laughs> brutally honest, I would brutally say. Brutally honest. I, I'm wondering, when it came out of her mouth, I'm like, did she know that they're playing this for everyone to see? Uh, I mean, you can only assume so. If you have a camera in your face. I, I would... guess. If she, what did she say? Um, she was just, who is she talking about? Remind um, me. Because she, she was, was just really going off. She was talking about that um, Jarrell's look was just not acceptable. Yeah. She obviously thought he should be eliminated. Right. Yeah. She, she, which I, you know, I respect her for the fact that she defended her concept because I felt the same way that really nobody gave her credit for the thought that went into her gown. And I really thought it was more appealing to the eye than Jarrell's and much less of a costume and definitely more wearable. And she really had a thought process going on with the bird of paradise and the freedom thing. I mean, it was all symbolism. And, you know, obviously people have differing visions and, as far as design goes, but and she, at least she had one. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. And that was what she said as well, mm -hmm. was that she felt like it was true to her as a designer mm -hmm. and you can only do what's true to you. And if they didn't like it, then maybe she should have gone home. She felt like she couldn't do anything right. right. Well, she did. She said that they critiqued her a lot for going out of her aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And then when she was in her aesthetic, 
they criticized her even more. So she's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. Like, that's fine. And I feel like that's pretty much a natural reaction that anyone would have if you felt like, okay, I tried to go outside the box or when I'm doing what's true to me, they don't like either one. Well, what are you left with? Then? Right. I agree. And one of the other interesting things that they covered in this um, After the Runway show last week that we covered, that we're covering tonight, uh, they asked Isaac what garment they they kind of interviewed people on the street in new york and what i guess we were letting fans ask questions of these designers and of the judges and right. they asked isaac what is one garment that you can't live without and i was surprised at his answer i was too t-shirt a t-shirt i'm like i don't isaac have ever seen you in a t-shirt i know i can't think of a time when it's always so like perfect he's always so together. polished right. i mean even tonight he had like the like electric yellow popped collar polo, you know, with his jacket. I mean, I've never seen him in a t-shirt. It must be what he wears when the cameras aren't rolling. That's true. And maybe that's his comfort, almost like a security blanket or some, for fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you can always refer to that. So they, uh, they also asked um, uh, the bra thing, the bra thing with uh, Joanna. Yeah, Joanna has been <laughs> obsessed it for many episodes, a long time, a long time, especially um, in last week's episode about designers um, being you making designs that you can wear bras with, mm -hmm. and um, and she clearly even tonight was just um, getting upset with especially male designers who don't consider those needs. Yeah, I mean, what do you think about that? Do you kind of get that? Because I love the sexy low back, but. And, you know, not that I have that much to hold in. Mm -hmm. I'm fine if I can go braless. But at the same time, it's kind of a comfort thing. Like, you feel kind of naked yeah. without a bra, I right? I mean, I agree with you. I love the low cut. I think it's awesome. And there's definitely a place for it. And mm -hmm. maybe the place for it is on a runway. And, yeah, absolutely. And they, and they mention that. But I think for every day where it's nice to be able to at least have the option to wear right. a bra. Right. And they, they did say that Kenley's designs – generally you can wear a bra or, or you know as she yeah. even said underwear i uh, just yeah. like we want to wear underwear and then like i think most dresses you can wear some sort of underwear yeah. with yeah and i mean it's definitely interesting to see the designers yeah. who consider though that type of mm -hmm. thing and those who are just like you know what i made a dress right. on a string yeah so. <laughs> i mean michael was like i'll admit i just some of my stuff is like low cut low back hanging on by one shoulder on a string and whatever that's i throw it on the runway and it's great right and you know he did say maybe when you put out your piece on the runway you know, when you go to retail, you do modernize it or, or um, not modernize it. What, did he, what was the word he said? Like revamp it. I mean, revamp I mean, it, redo it, something to where you can wear a bra with it. So I, I think that's good. I mean, I'd like our viewers' opinions and yeah. everybody tweet us, tweet me at Candon Bliss and at Stephanie Wenger or tweet us at After Buzz TV. That Let too. us know what you think about wearing a bra with a dress. Yeah. <laughs> you know, getting uh, interesting tonight with the topic. Yeah, sorry, Ben. Sure. By the way, we want to thank Mr. Ben over there in the booth helping us out. Absolutely. Uh, he's doing a great job tonight with us, and we are I'm sure he's loving this conversation that we're giving him <laughs> right now. <laughs> exactly. So moving into uh, tonight's e episode. Right. Um, what, I mean, what were you expecting this week? You know, I was actually a little, I guess, curious when I heard, um, last week that Pharrell would be judging. Right. And, um, it would be a lighting based challenge where designers have to use, um, lighting mm -hmm. elements to make their design. Um, but I was actually really impressed with the episode. Yeah. I, I thought it was kind of cool to yeah. see them go outside the box and do something that we haven't really seen on Project Runway oh, before. Oh, we definitely have not seen that before. You yeah. know, I will say the beginning of the show was really awkward. Um, I'm sorry, but I still have not warmed up to the host. No, she feels like she just really wants to be Heidi Klum. And there's other ways mm -hmm. to host a show like that, I feel like. And she... Yeah, I feel like she's not making it her own. Mm -hmm, and exactly. I mean, just walk, really, she looks awkward rocking down the runway. I think she, I think there's times where during the judging process, when she's talking with the other judges, she kind of just chills out mm -hmm. and just talks. And she's much better and, and much more likable. But when she kind of does the awkward slink and it almost looks like she can't walk in her heels down the runway and yeah. she's really slow, I'm like, what are you doing? I know. I just want her to, you know, have her own identity. Yeah. Just almost like the designer. Own like, it. Uh, own it. Exactly. Yeah. And have that aesthetic that we know it's you or, or that personality where we know that 
this is who you are as a host, just like it's who you are as a designer. Right. I want to know who she is. And at this point, I'm not getting it. So. No. Um, but, you know, it was interesting, the whole technology challenge. I was curious, like you, like, what is they totally talking about? Lighting with their dresses? And I really didn't put two and two together because there was kind of this trend last year maybe of the little um costumes that had the lighting in it and where they would like dancers would do a dances and then True. the lights would go off and all you would see was the lights yeah and that was cool um i was kind of worried that it was going to turn out really bizarre and totally yeah. unwearable and there were a few that were definitely unwearable definitely we definitely saw that <laughs> um but they had 300 dollars to go to the lighting store and 100 dollars to go to mood mm -hmm. um and I just have to address Austin right away because he's going to be an interesting theme throughout this whole episode. What was he talking about? You know, he <laughs> went from being inspired by fairy tales to talking about stardust and, I mean, it was... Galaxies. Yeah. And I was like, where... He just talked... What he, he said, I just want clouds of tool. And I he was spraying something in the store and saying how I had to create a fantasy and, like really yeah. just off his rocker a little bit. Uh, it sounded a little crazy when you, I, but uh, honestly, I actually got the image of what it was kind of going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could tell he wanted it to be like she was walking down the runway and she was her own galaxy, her own like stars right. were popping off of her dress. And whether you like the dress or not, I feel like I could see that. In yeah, the he definitely had a vision and he stuck to it. Mm -hmm. Whereas Michael, on the other hand, I don't know. Michael totally is... Totally wacko all over the place. Yeah. How many dresses did he make before he made his decision? I think Kenley was talking about that he had six different choices and he could have literally gone with any of them. And that's... And been okay. And been okay, which is interesting. And he clearly didn't make the best of choices. No, I, I was surprised with his final choice. I, I think if you squint, there's mm -hmm. been a few where you're like, ah, oh, I kind of get it. And you like squint. Yeah. <laughs> and you sort of see the vision. But in reality, it's like, ooh... And we Not have the so benefit of pausing our DVR. Right, we do, because they go fast on yeah. that runway. Exactly. And so we pause and we talk a little bit yeah. and, and, and write down some notes about each look. And I feel like with his, I was like, it really didn't work when it was paused. It was just like, ooh, that is not good. And then I wanted to like it once we had unpaused it right. and actually saw it walking right. down the runway. Well, because like like I said, the whole vision sort of you get that. What would what did he call it? He called it like a ninja turtle. I think or so. something like it that. Was... And she kind of did have a Ninja Turtle-esque look. Mm -hmm. um, the the greenish yellow and the, like her eyes were covered up. She had the crazy mod ponytail and like the gloves, the galaxy yeah. shoulders. Like it really was space age Ninja Turtle woman. Uh, I think that's <laughs> what I wrote down. Space age was something um, that was definitely came up in my, uh, in my notes. <laughs> something that didn't surprise me again is Mondo being stressed out. Every what week. is every week? What is it? I don't know. And it, he always does fine. I mean, yeah. he comes out doing well, but he doesn't know what to do. He looks super stressed. And you think he's the one who's going home yeah. every week. Every time. Every week. Until he pulls out the final thing. And you're like, oh, well, that's all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you do this in the middle of the yeah. night? Like, what's now, going on? I will say, I don't know if I was like, wowed with his final design this week they loved it mm -hmm. um i was just kind of like mm, he kind of played it safe i i do think his construction of the lighting uh the the bone the boning lighting thing he basically yeah. sewed lighting panels into the dress which is impressive which is impressive mm -hmm. but the design itself i was like mm. yeah he did I... the whole like madonna boobs thing yeah, it, and I really didn't like it in the construction, in the workroom. Mm -hmm. It looked even worse. And then he pulled off something that was at least semi-wearable yeah. in, the, in the runway, which was great. But. He also sort of did that, nin not well, his was more space age, but it had that like ponytail kind of hairdo and the little mask on his on the face of the yeah. model. I love that Kenley mentioned as it was coming down the runway that it looked like she was looking at the sun. I just thought that that was a really... It was so bright. It was so bright. It was like yellow <laughs> jumping at your eyeballs. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let's talk about Kenley. What did you think of her design? Um, I actually really liked it. She was my favorite of the night. Um, and I thought it was, there was something really nice about it. It's definitely still in her wheelhouse. Like, she didn't go that far outside the box. I mean, other than, I guess, her cape-like jacket that had um, kind of a fencing-like look to it. Right. Um, I thought it was creative to make her own plaid, though. That was something that none of the other designers thought about. Yeah, I mean, for the first time, 
I did like her design. I mean, yeah. not that I haven't liked anything that she's done in the past, but I do feel like I've always been like, come on, like it's so safe and easy and like it's the same dress every time just a different crazy polka dotted pattern mm -hmm. and she did step out a little bit i mean it was her same cut but that upholstery thing at first i was like oh girl you are ruining that dress yeah. because i liked the plaid i thought that was really creative of her yeah. but she wasn't using the lights so i knew she had to use the lights in some way um which I think she could have done better on her usage of the lights, which yeah. Pharrell Williams also agreed with that. Um, but her that that jacket thing, it totally worked. It did. The and big I, Michelin yeah. Man <laughs> sleeve thing. Exactly. And I thought it was going to make the model look really big. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of my concern with the jacket. And then when I saw it, the dress was so well fitted yeah. that the jacket didn't take away from exactly. that. Exactly. And that's, I think, the designers tonight had some issues um, the ones who were critiqued mm -hmm. had issues with with uh, accentuating the waist of their their model. Absolutely, I think that was an issue that came up with with Michael for yeah. sure. Yeah, and highlighting the body with Jarrell, yeah. um, with the skirt thing. Like he had that very waist accentuating mm -hmm. thing with the big hip standy outy thing. <laughs> I don't Absolutely. even know what they're called, but no. it looked kind of like the Marie Antoinette look with the um, yeah with uh, the poofy hips. Exactly. But then he did like this pin skirt to the floor, and it was like, wait, what? Like you yeah. could have gone Marie Antoinette or like Austin did kind of that with his big poofy outy dress. Yeah. Or y he should have done like a tutu kind of idea. That's true. Well, I mean, what do you think of Jarrell's thing? I don't know. Jarrell kind of, I wanted to like it like at first. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, because we saw it kind of in pieces and I was like, well, it has potential. It's just like how he finishes mm -hmm. it. And then I agree with the long long skirt and all of this it just kind of screamed granny it screamed granny <laughs> and it was interesting to see him actually make the sh skirt shorter yeah and it worked it did work and i was like oh that's actually a really cool different look right and yeah i mean i think he did have a little bit of a like if, like if you if you looked at it in the right way you could see his kind of indian tribal vibe and it was like oh that's kind of cool to have the crazy lights and the mm -hmm tribal look but it just really it almost reminded me of the silhouette of that um the bikini top with the high collar and the weird skirt with the open stomach like almost the same silhouette yeah just too much fabric this time I, I didn't think of that but you're absolutely right that's so true that it was and he he does tend to go back to that and have that it's always something tribal mm -hmm. related and mm -hmm. it would be nice to see just like henley him stretch out step and, out a and little see bit something a little different i mean is that is that it is that the, all the five mondo Terrell, kinley austin oh we haven't really talked about austin yeah um oh austin <laughs> yes it's um don't even know exactly what to say i mean i as i mentioned i thought it was exactly what his vision was right. i saw in that dress i would never it didn't seem wearable to me it didn't seem like a I don't, I'm not sure what you could do with that. Even a performer on stage, which was the what the winner gets in this challenge, is. right? Which which we'll have to touch on that because I don't really understand who. I mean, I, we talked about Pharrell Williams, but he dresses singers, or I believe what? he has a record label, and I think mm. one of his artists will be wearing. Ah, okay, so he seems just like or, all over the place with his stuff, with his projects. Yeah, it, he he seemed like he has a fashion label. Um, he's got. Um, obviously he's a record producer hmm. and he, um, I think he owns his own record label. Um, and hmm. I'm not sure if the artists him themselves will be wearing it or it will be incorporated somewhere on stage. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I don't, I didn't see the whole best dressed man in America thing. I don't think he was putting on his A game for Project I, Runway. No, tonight. I'm like, come on, the typical hat, like the little cockeyed, you know, baseball hat with the sticker still on it or whatever. I'm like, come on, <laughs> I didn't see that at all. But no. he, but he did have some interesting perspective. So, um, so anyway, like, yeah, like you said, I, uh, to wear from one of those artists, Austin's dress, not so much. It was like see through tool mm -hmm. in bunches with a couple lights sewn on. I mean, really, in reality, the the structure was amazing, mm -hmm. but it looked a little unfinished, in my opinion. It was also interesting to see how they considered using the black light because that mm -hmm. was the other element of this challenge was that instead of walking down on a normal runway, they were all in the black light, right. and so 
Austin thought of these stars, and then you had Mondo, who wanted the stripes. Everybody kind of had this accent to their piece that they wanted noticed in the black. Yeah, and I think the ones who created more dimension really did um, favor better. I mean, Austin, even though his dress was a little bit on the kind of unfinished, like kind of like, I don't know, I get what you're trying to do, but did you really do it? Yeah. kind of way um i do think that the ones who created the depth and you could kind of see through austin's and it was kind of like a galaxy and it had movement and then um kenley's you could see through that upholstery fabric and it made her not look big and yeah and, you know even jarell if it had movement but his was just totally not executed well no and michael kind of it just felt like they kind of took the surface level of the challenge yeah and um and didn't really get to that depth in either literal depth or in terms of like looking deeper at the challenge and finding a creative way to um, accomplish it. So do you think that that the judges made the right decision? I happen to really, I don't know. I I thought that Michael's just the poor construction. This is not the first time he's had issues with construction. And I felt like maybe that's an issue that everybody else who's done that has Mm. had to go home. So why is Michael still there? Mm. But on the flip side, he's had some really interesting ideas and I could mm-hmm. see where he was going with the challenge. Right. I was a little mixed about it. Yeah, I, I same thing. I mean, I would have been sad to see Michael go home, I think, at this point because I do think he utilized the lights in an interesting right. way. I mean, it was kind of distracting, but I just thought Jarrell's was a flop. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I was glad to kind of see that, but it was a tough decision and I could tell that the judges were on the fence and that it was really hard for them. I was even debating it while we were watching, just like I knew I marked those two as my least favorite from Oh run, yeah, from, from the from the get-go. Absolutely, <laughs> from the runway, I was it was not a fan. So, it was hard for me to even say which one, you know, was worse. It'll be interesting to see though Michael come back next week and what he does. Yeah. Um, so well, let's kind of get into the um, this new after the runway thing. We did. We, there's another after the runway show tonight, and we watched it, and yes. it was again kind of. It's an interesting addition, and I know after the commercial in a little bit, we're going to talk about what we think about this whole addition of this after the runway thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but this when the lights go out, yeah, after show. Um, they were talking, they, they sh- started off with Jarrell's journey because Jarrell was eliminated this week. So they started off with his journey through his designs. And one thing that I saw when they were showing each of his designs was really a lot of the same silhouette. Mm-hmm. And it, it was all stuff that I love because it's all accentuating the neckline. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of his stuff was like either turtlenecked or um, had some sort of attention grabber here. Uh, whether it was mesh, like see-through mesh, and then like a bustier top or something. Yeah. And it was very flattering to his models. And I, that was something I think, you know, you kind of say tribal and you say these words that you, mm-hmm. you know, throw onto him yeah. but and attach to his designs. But really, it's not always tribal. It's just kind of that's where he puts his focus. Absolutely. And I feel like he also is one of the best at – um, he knows how to dress a model mm-hmm. properly. Like he does the fit really well and is able to realize because every model has their things that are great and maybe not so great about yeah. them. And he's able to really accentuate what works for his particular model. And yeah. I feel like that's a great thing. Too. I agree. I don't think that anyone's ever really looked, even tonight, I don't think anyone looked at her, at the model and was like, oh, the model looks terrible. It was yeah. always just. The, like that looks terrible yeah, whatever exa- that is exactly I mean when you like you said when you pulled the skirt up and you could see the model yeah it was it was good it was better so <laughs> absolutely um and then you know they they went to Isaac and Isaac said this was kind of interesting he said Kenley should have won the challenge mm-hmm. um which is interesting yeah and who I, did win by the way um I believe it was um Austin yay <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. know. <laughs> you look so unhappy when that I know. happened. Well, because for the first time, I mean, I was glad that he, I think he, he definitely grabbed my attention more this episode. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, Kenley really, really did embrace the challenge. She did do something really creative and really executed it well. And I think she deserved to win as well. So it's funny, though, to juxtapose last week when Isaac said, Kenley, do not make the same dress again. 
Yeah. And this week he's saying she should have won. And I think that's a pretty cool exactly. jump for her. Exactly. And it was she was definitely, as I said, my favorite, the one I thought should have won. And it was nice to also hear the judges agree with me. No, exactly. <laughs> and I think, you know, they made an interesting point um, talking about Kenley's construction of, for, for women's clothing. Yeah. And it is very flattering. Yeah. It's that, um, I think she said it was 50s style cut in all of her designs, and it really does accentuate the waist, whether or not you have an upper body or a lower body, you know, that, that uh, doesn't need it to accentuating. <laughs> the waist is really the most flattering part of a woman, and I think she really creates that womanly figure with everything that she makes. Yeah, and uh, as I've said before, I just feel like she's so great. You know who she is as a designer, mm -hmm. and that's, I feel like, one of the biggest parts of Project Runway is yep. getting that identity. This is who I am as a designer, because once the show is over with in, I believe, two more weeks, it's, you know, you're out there, and yeah, you yeah. need to have a design that people want or at least is interesting and yeah. should be on a runway. Well, I didn't want to like her for a long time. Just I, I just felt like she was annoying. She was like – this hippie vintagey look. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I think I wasn't embracing her modern take on the vintage style. I was yeah. more like, if you're gonna do vintage, just do classic vintage, like Ralph Lauren kind of stuff. Yeah. Not like this kind of mod, whatever. Yeah. But I'm starting to like it. I'm starting to see where it fits. And you know, I might not necessarily be inclined to wear all of her designs, but I do get it now. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because I was kind of in the same boat. I didn't want to like her. I felt like she was staying in, in the same box mm -hmm. and I typically like people who are able to spread their wings a little bit more. But with her, I'm starting to really like some of her stuff and I mm -hmm. think she's taking risks in patterns and things like mm -hmm. that that um, maybe, again, I wouldn't necessarily wear it, but it's interesting to see and yeah. it's, it's cool to see how she's pairing it together and she's kind of proud of who she is as a designer and that's yeah. nice to see too. and that's good yeah. that makes us like i mean that makes you like her when she's not cocky yeah but she's just really confident and mm -hmm. really loves what she makes and exactly. knows that people love it too and not everybody's gonna love it but some people do and that's what she can rest in so and she also got into this idea of whether um women designers are better at designing for women because she mm -hmm. says she kind of designs things that she would wear and that right. and that made Isaac kind of bring up this idea of well women often say that that they design for themselves but is it better to be a man who can design for any woman or a woman who truly gets who she is and then designs hmm. that way yeah that was a weird question I think I think we didn't really get a clear answer because Isaac had an opinion Kinley had an opinion and Joanna had an opinion and they were all kind of right. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I think they're both right. I mean, what's your take on that? I don't know. It's interesting because I, um, Isaac Mizrahi is one of my favorite designers. Right. Love him. And so I can't say, oh, males shouldn't be designing. I think that there's some of the best out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But also, I totally can understand why a woman who's designing clothes that she would wear, she understands the fit and all of those kinds of issues. Not necessarily better than a man, but it's definitely maybe just makes it a different understanding of right. of how to design. And no woman's body is going to be the same as another. So to have a lot of women designers who are very different is really good, Absolutely. because then if you have a you know if you had a hundred Kenleys designing for a hundred Kenleys, it would only fit the you know however many Kenleys exist. But what yeah. if I'm not Kenley? Yeah. So nice. I mean I think that that's where the the uh, male designers come in and they can be a little more broad and they can fit the just the average woman and yeah. um, and really expand their collection to fit a lot of different people. I also wanted to hear Georgina's opinion mm -hmm. on it because I think that as a female designer who's doing it day in and day out, she would be a great opinion on that is what does she think of male designers it has you know all of that stuff that mm -hmm. w is it successful why is her line so successful and we saw her come in and out very quickly mm -hmm. which i was kind of sad about i wanted to hear more from her she's so stunningly gorgeous and mm -hmm. i love her designs i mean her line is just so classic and beautiful and yeah. it, but it's but it's modern too it's she really has it down so like you said that is would be something to ask her. I wonder if we can find her on Twitter. I know, exactly. If you, if you like... guys find Georgina Chapman on Twitter, let us know. Um, so they played a game with with Joanna, which was kind of funny. The, um, if you remember a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, Joanna came into the workroom and she was talking to Austin about this whole like 
hideous versus fabulous controversy. Absolutely. And I thought it was hysterical because as a woman, and I don't know if this is kind of like a gender episode. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Everything's like about being a woman, which is fine with me. Um, oh, but she's, I mean, as a woman, I get this because sometimes when you try to go out of the box and you try to do something stylish and fabulous, you kind of are concerned that maybe is this hideous or is it fabulous? And how do you really trust anyone's opinion to tell you yeah. which one it is. One of my best friends in college always had this rule that when you're getting ready, take one item off and then mm -hmm. you can walk out the door and be pretty sure that you're not in the hideous category. Right. Um, and so that's kind of the rule that I still use uh -huh. because I think it's, you know, helpful. Jarrell should have used that um, last week. It's so it was true. like take off the one of the jewelry pieces or one, the green thing and then he would have been fine. Yeah. But that's that's a good point. Um, and, and I think... You know, I'm always under the impression that like uh, accessories make me too stylized, so I sometimes I shy away from them. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes like it, you need that, you need that to make it fabulous. But there's a fine line, like like Joanna said, um, and they've flashed a bunch of pictures up of some of the former designs. I know, so good, <laughs> and I thought it was great. Yeah, um, they flashed up Jarrell, two well, no, Jarrell, Jarrell, and then two Michael designs, two Michael designs. April from way back when, and then Kenley. Yeah. And she only gave two fabulous awards, and I think she only gave Kenley the fabulous award because she used a rubber bath mat. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, is impressive. Mm -hmm. Let's and the loofah there. in the hair, like, it kind of worked, even though it was a loofah and a rubber bath mat. But, yeah. but I really do appreciate that she loved that feather dress of Michael's. Like, yeah. fabulous. I mean, fabulous. So good. Just drop, I mean, yeah, I'm like, just drop dead. Like, I amazing. Know. But uh, Jarrell and Michael, Michael's other design, Jarrell and April all got the hideous category, which I was like, yes. The whole dyed dress mm -hmm. from April and Mike, what, which one was it? My, oh, Michael's little uh, uh, the shorts. shorts that were just too short. Too short. And yeah. the, like, he, what did he say? He said um, her boob looks like it deflated. Oh. <laughs> and it did. It, it did, did look it like did. her boob deflated. It did. So, I mean, it was just, that's one of my least favorite Michael designs. Oh, yeah. And I... Can't wait to see, again, in the next couple of weeks what he's going to pull off because I feel like some weeks I've loved his stuff and other weeks like yeah, that one. like not so much. Not so much, <laughs> exactly. I thought it was funny and I thought it kind of showed us a little more of Joanna's personality. Um, and then they flashed pictures of her. And she's like, where did you get these pictures? You and know? she goes, my assistant probably took them. <laughs> you guys have been doing this sneaky or whatever, and yeah. um, which one of them was kind of hideous and one of them was kind of fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was cool. Like, she's a, she's normal, too. Like, she's the yeah. editor of Marie Claire magazine, and she still can have a bad fashion day every I, now and then. Exactly. I was like, we all have them. There are moments where it's not yeah. perfect. And, and you it's... try to step out of the box a little bit, and sometimes you step out the, <laughs> too much, you know? Exactly, yeah. So I think that that related... She was relatable in that moment yeah you know, which is it, unusual because sometimes it feels like she's so far removed yeah. <laughs> from, from things that people wear day to day on the street and so it was nice to see her be like oh you know what i right. have bad days yeah too. because she was she always has this very structured look when she comes into the workroom mm -hmm. but i think that that just showed us that she's real mm -hmm. and that she's a real person um they asked her what her biggest pet peeve was in the word of the word on the street yeah whatever. badly fitted clothing yeah, which one is worse in your opinion? Too tight or too big? You know, I think too tight probably because Ditto. it's just it's so obvious. Too big, it's it might not be flattering, right. but it's not horrible to look at where right. too tight when it's too tight, it just, it really doesn't work. You can, like, fix it if it's too big. Like, you can put a belt on it. You can take it in. But, like, if it's too tight, girlfriend, <laughs> unless you can lose five pounds in, like, two seconds, take it off. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, mean, I feel another day. I feel the same way. And she didn't really specify one or the other for her biggest pet peeve. But mine is if, if it's too tight or too revealing, like, come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not okay. Um, and, and, you know, then we got into kind of an emotional moment with Austin. That um, was a surprising turn in the mm -hmm. episode, too. Um, he, you don't usually see them talking to anyone outside because they are sequestered from their family and friends. No laptop, no computers, no nothing. Yeah. They're just in that box, you know, and they can't really get out. Um, yeah. And I felt bad for him. And I guess maybe 
they made an exception for him because this is kind of an intense moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was interesting to see him on Skype with his mom. Talking. Who looks fabulous, by the way. I know, Austin's like... mom is like hot. <laughs> she looks like my age. Yeah, exactly. Bizarre. It's so crazy. Um, but she was gorgeous. Kind of reminded me of Georgina Chapman, but with like big blue eyes. Yeah, I mean, so pretty. <laughs> I was like, that's his mom? Yeah. In the When we were watching the episode. Um, yeah, it was so hard to watch him because you kind of saw some moments you're like, oh, he's kind of from another planet. Yeah. And then you saw this real moment with him where he was seeing his mom lose their family home um, to foreclosure. And That's rough. I, I think, mean, yeah. that to me just reinforces the fact that just because you're on TV mm -hmm. doesn't mean that your life is perfect. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times people think that, you know, because – celebrities have this enchanted lifestyle that they have everything figured out and that their life is without worry and if anything it might be more worrisome to be in the in the spotlight yeah i was gonna say i think the spotlight kind of amplifies things sometimes absolutely when uh when you're struggling it's it's out there in the public eye yeah. for everyone but i i was endeared to austin in that moment and really felt for him and felt like okay you you are a real person you're not just a character because yeah. he he likes to be the character yeah. That's his thing. That's what I, yeah, it's it's so true. And I felt like it was interesting to see him not be the designer, but be the son for the first time yeah. and, and be concerned about his mom. And he is talking about that the reason he's doing the show is so he can support his family and hopefully find them another yeah. home. Not just to boost his ego. Yeah. So kind of a sad moment. <laughs> um, okay, guys, well, we are going to go to commercial real quick. But when we come back, we're going to talk about our impressions of this after the runway edition. Yeah, so please call us. Call uh, us and let us know what you think. The views expressed here are those of Buzz the whole TV. After Buzz TV. Hi, I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag coworkers about it at the water cooler. Then I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzzTV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds, like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzzTV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after-shows, from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives. And more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? Hey, guys. Welcome back to Project Runway All-Stars Season 10, Episode 9. Again, I'm Candon Bliss here with Miss Stephanie Wenger, and we're going to kind of go into a little special segment here and talk about what do we think, uh, what are our first impressions of this edition of the After the Runway show? Because as you fans know out there, Project Runway All-Star started off as an hour and a half show. Then after about three or four episodes, it was an hour show. And then three or four episodes later, now we have this 30-minute edition at the end of the show, uh, yeah. which I was really excited about at the beginning because I am a Bachelor fan, yeah. and The Bachelor has the After the Rose ceremony, you know, drama dish where everybody comes back right. and they all yell at each other and it's gossip and drama and wonderful for After Buzz TV kind of shows. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was excited to see that happen, and I think I did not get that impression. I'm still yeah. kind of on the fence you know, it just felt incredibly awkward. Yeah. And, and, like, that's that was my main impression of it. I wanted, exactly, same as you, to love it and think mm -hmm. getting kind of that inside dish yeah. and what's going on. I kind of wanted to know, like, more about the workroom. I never mm -hmm. feel like I get enough of or the Or out of, like, in the home, like, up in the apartment. Exactly. And you kind of only had a few questions mm -hmm. about that stuff. And really, it just felt very much like Isaac Mizrahi asked the question, they're kind of prepared answers and um it was like if a publicist was right. sitting there okay you're gonna say this you're right. gonna say that and we're all gonna you know listen to each other and never interrupt each other and that's just not the right. real world right. well they were definitely interrupting each other they were like yelling over each other a little bit at the beginning true. and like kinley and car they brought Kara back which is interesting um on one of the shows and uh Kara, kinley and austin were just like 
and they were all trying to get the same point across but they were all not shutting up to let the other I one know. talk. It, yeah, it's so true. <laughs> it's it, They were just like, okay, and you could not tell who was saying what, no. and it just got crazy. I was like, we looked at each other like, what? Yeah. What's going on? Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, and they had everybody kind of dishing some stuff, but the one time that they asked a question that was juicy, like, did anyone sleep with anyone on the show, Kara did this awkward, like, I can't say anything. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. There's, they're all gay men, Except right? Except for Michael, who... Is he not gay? I I don't know if he's gay or not, but he definitely has kids, so we can assume he's in a all committed right. relationship. Well, we need we need some fans to tweet us and let us know if Michael Costello is gay, what's the deal with his son. We'll do our research, you do yeah. yours. Uh, because we did find out that Michael Costello has a son and yeah. that he really misses his son and then he wants to get back home and then it's hard for him to be away. Um, but I don't understand this whole awkward, like, sleeping no, with each other thing. exactly. I was like, who did you sleep with? <laughs> like, I know. I mean, if Michael has a kid, I doubt it was him. Yeah. And if the other guys aren't going to be interested. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, un unless we had some Kenley Kara action going on, which I don't want to know about. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, maybe that should stay behind closed doors. Maybe door. that should, yeah. And she said the whole, like, what happens on Project Runway stays on Project Runway. But I'm like, well, then what's the point of the show? <laughs> exactly. This is the show. You're, you're supposed like, to tell me all the secrets. Yeah, you're like, this is the point. Dish for me. Exactly. <laughs> Finally, dish for me. Um, So I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I think... I think if they really just let it go and kind of let it be kind of a f jab fest. I mean, they do this whole fashion jab of the week. Yeah. Which is, like, kind of funny because you, you for the first time, the contestants get to see what each other is saying about each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's cool, I guess. And it causes a little drama. But they all seem to just kind of be holding it in like, <laughs> yeah. That's well, fine. And they're like, oh, yeah, I totally agree with that. And I'm like, it's a jab. Like, you should be at least offended. a little, a little offended. <laughs> they're not, like, fighting. They're like, oh, my God, we're so friends. And, like, mm. we just love each other. And Michael and Mondo are, like, BFFs. And Kenley and Carr are BFFs. And Jarrell's single. And Austin is the third wheel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, this is fun and all but <laughs> yeah and like it's kind of that extension of just like you're like okay so there's no drama right okay. yeah I mean it was funny like we said to get to know Isaac a little better and uh, Joanna a little bit better but <sighs> too staged too staged, too staged. Let it go, guys. Let it go. We want to. We want to hear the drama. We want to have news and gossip to share with our fans. <laughs> the, yeah, the one piece of like little news or kind of gossipy thing we got was Helen Mirren as a fan of the show. So that's pretty exciting, yeah. Helen Mirren. If you would like to come into AfterBuzz TV studios to dish about Project Runway, we would love to have you yeah, and Joanna do. from Marie Claire Magazine. Yeah, so um, that would be a fun. That would be a fun show. I'm gonna Absolutely. get. I'm gonna get on that. That's on my to do list. Track them down. Yeah, track track down. them Twitter down. Twitter is your tool to yes. do it. <laughs> but you guys, fans out there, let us know what you think about after the runway next week. We'll we'll also be covering uh, Project Runway episode ten. And the After the Runway for episode 10. So I think we only have two more episodes left. The finale is getting so close. Next week's episode determines who goes on to the finale. Wow. So exciting. Yeah. I can't wait. I hope, I hope, I mean, let's, so let's, let's predict what's going to happen okay. next week. Um, and, and what do you see going into the top three for predictions? Top three. Um, I think you're going to get Michael in there. Uh, Henley maybe because mm -hmm. um, I think I feel like the judges are starting to realize that she kind of has this look and that um, it's going to be interesting to see if she can step out of her box a little bit and continue to do that mm -hmm. because um, you know you um, you want to see that from her you want to see what else she can kind of do and where her look is going to be and what right. her line is going to look like um, and then, I don't know, the third is really hard for me. What do you think? Um, I definitely see Mondo. Yeah. Um, I definitely see Mondo. I definitely see Kenley. Mm -hmm. And between Michael and Austin, I don't know. I, I, I want to see Michael. Yeah. But I don't know if they're – I don't know if they're going to let Austin leave ever. They're just yeah. never – he's That's... not going to win and he's not going to lose. He's just going to stay perpetually on Project Runway. <laughs> See, and Mondo, like, I love his work mm -hmm. and I think he's great, but that's kind of where my debate came in was that – are they going to go with the guy who's consistently done great stuff, which is Mondo, or Austin, who's kind of more of the wild card? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, it's a good question. You guys let us know your answer. Tweet us at AfterBuzz TV. Tweet me at Candid Bliss. At Stephanie Wenger. Awesome, guys. Well, tune in next week. We'll have a great show for you. And let us know if you have any gossip that you want to dish about. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a great night. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.